This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks around the world. Here now the news for October 11th, 2023, and there is a lot. The prices for all tiers of Walt Disney World annual passes have been increased. The new prices were added to the official Walt Disney World website on the morning of October 11th. Uh, the Increda Pass is now $14.49, Sorcerer Pass $9.99, the Pirate Pass $7.99, the Pixie Dust Pass $4.39. The, the renewal prices are Increda Pass $12.29, Sorcerer Pass $8.49, Pirate Pass $6.79, and Pixie Dust $3.69. The smallest price increase is seen on the Sorcerer Pass. That pass increased from $9.69 to $9.99, an increase of $30. The Pixie Dust Pass increased in price $40 while the Increda Pass increased, and the Pirate Pass for that matter, increased by $50. Food and beverage prices were also increased at nearly all venues across the Walt Disney World Resort, including uh, ODV carts, quick service, table service, anything and everything. The price increases impact hundreds of items across several locations throughout the resort. The increases range from as low as 20 cents to several dollars, depending on the item and location. The spikes affect both non-location specific items and menu offerings unique to individual locations. For example, a standard cup of regular freshly brewed Joffrey's coffee now costs $3.79. That's up from $3.49. A standard 20-ounce bottle of Powerade is now $4.99. That's up from $4.69 on those soft drink bottles. The price of the Nestle Mickey's Premium Ice Cream Bar, a Walt Disney World staple, is now $6.29. It's an increase from $5.99, uh, with some locations charging even more. Snacks and treats like pretzels, churros, and Dole Whips have also experienced price increases, with the specifics of the increases being dependent on the item's sides or toppings and the locations in which you purchase them. The price hikes also impact items like cheeseburgers, pizza, beverages, both soft and alcoholic beverages quick ser at quick service locations. Prices also increased at table service restaurants with both item-based and uh, fixed menu pricing structures. The changes impact nearly every restaurant, but just a list of a few examples. Uh, nearly every entree, milkshake, and alcoholic beverage at the Sci-Fi Dine-In uh, has been increased as well from anywhere from 25 cents to $3. Hopping over to Mama Melrose's in the same park, nearly all items on the lunch and dinner menus have increased by $1 to $2. Meanwhile, Be Our Guest in Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom, a restaurant with a fixed menu, now costs $70 per adult and $41 per child for both lunch and dinner, an increase from $67 and $39, respectively. Also, over at Ohana, at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, breakfast was $45 for adults, $29 for kids. It's now $49 per adult, $30 per child. Dinner is now priced at $62 per adult and $40 per child, increasing from $59 and $38. Individual dining location menus have been updated on the Walt Disney World website. You can check out all your favorites there. Um, but chances are everything and anything on those menus is probably up in price as of October 11. The cost to park your vehicle at the Walt Disney World Resort and its theme parks has also increased. Standard parking for one day only is now $30. That's a $5 increase. Meanwhile, preferred parking ranges from $45 to $55, depending on your vehicle type. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacation. Uh, your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and our team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is, as prices increase, their concierge services are still 100% free, so book today. Walt Disney Imagineering has made steady progress on the application of a vibrant mural to the side of the barn in the queue of Tiana's Bayou Adventure at the Magic Kingdom since starting the process in late August. The group recently shared a look at the new mural on their official Instagram account, also providing a bit of insight into the story and lore of the new attraction. Two of the photos show an Imagineer painting the outlines of one of the mural sections. The particular section this Imagineer is working on contains flora, a swirling rainbow design, musical notes, and a yellow bird, as seen on the printed image they're holding in the second photo. We first noticed a large depiction of this section of the mural taped uh, to the side of the barn on October 9th, the large print served as a temporary placeholder for the painting that will ultimately adorn this section of the barn. 
Walt Disney Imagineering also shared some insight into the barn story in their post uh, caption, writing that it will serve as the main office of Tiana's newest business. Quote, as progress continues on Tiana's Bayou Adventure of Magic Kingdom, you'll notice a beautiful mural taking shape along the exterior of Tiana's repurposed barn, home of the main office of her newest business. The business references Tiana's Foods, described by Walt Disney Imagineering as an employee-owned cooperative. Uh, the business is complete with a boutique farm and both a working and teaching kitchen, and is where Tiana and her colleagues create all sorts of new products that they are bringing to the world, including a line of original hot sauces. A Tiana Foods water tower was installed near the attraction in late June, of course. The barn in the attraction's queue area was painted yellow in late July, and we first noticed the new mural being painted in August, and uh, they've been continuing work on that since. I think uh, Disney didn't like how much unofficial attention it was getting, so now Imagineering decided to show us up close what they're actually working on. Of course, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will open at the Walt Disney World Resort in Disneyland Park uh, sometime in late 2024. The neon marquee at Sid Coenga's one-of-a-kind shop at Disney's Hollywood Studios has been replaced, removing antiques and curios and more from the design. The Hollywood Boulevard staple is home to Disney Photo Pass in more recent years. The top portion of the marquee, which bears the shop's name, uh, is the same. However, now the text directly below reads, Tinseltown Photos instead of Antiques and Curios. The text on the two stars has also been changed. The blue star on the left now reads Disney Photo Pass instead of Hollywood, and the orange star on the right reads Treasured Memories rather than Tinseltown Treasures, uh, the former sign you're looking at now. The yellow bulbs on the bottom of the sign remain, as do the multicolored lights adorning the building. Um, for those of you that don't know, as, as the oldest man in the Disney online community, I'll tell you the tale. Um, Sid Coenga's one-of-a-kind shop actually is original to Hollywood Studios. It opened with the park on May 1st of uh, 1989, and it used to be an actual store, and the store sold actual uh, memorabilia from the movies and television and such. So you could buy autographs, you could buy movie props, uh, you could buy all sorts of sign checks by Walt Disney, uh, which one is still on the wall. They kept some stuff as propping, um, even when it became a photo pass uh, sort of aid location. I think it was also a, essentially a magic band aid location at one point too, um, when that was newer. Um, and, and interestingly enough, when the park opened, there was a walk-around character of Sid Coenga um, as part of the Streetmosphere. Uh, you know, rem <laughs> let's get you to bed, Grandpa. Who remembers Streetmosphere, the citizens of Hollywood? Yeah, Disney, you still haven't brought them back. I assume you have no plans to. And we'll rant about that probably more as we get near the 35th anniversary of Hollywood Studios this coming May. Um, but Sid Coenga, there was a Streetmosphere, citizens of Hollywood walk-around character to match the shop as well. Um, they loved the performer so much that they actually retired the character when he passed away. Um, but Sid Coenga's lives on, and, and rightfully so. I mean, certainly he used the location for many things. So um, happy to see that this space will remain there in some way, shape, or form, probably for the rest of eternity, which makes me happy. The location of Eat by Manit Shahan, a new quick service restaurant coming soon to Disney Springs at Walt Disney World, has been revealed. The new dining location will be situated in the marketplace section of the Springs and will inhabit the same larger building as Disney's Days of Christmas shop. As was speculated previously, the restaurant will take over the space formerly occupied by Wolfgang Puck Express. That restaurant closed forever in late 2020. Eat by Manit Shahan will open at Disney Springs later this year, though no firm date has been announced yet. Uh, it's owned by Chopped Judge Manit Shahan and her husband, entrepreneur Vivek Diora. It will serve modern, fun, Indian-inspired cuisine and was announced in July of this year. Prices have been raised on Disneyland Resort tickets effective as of today. The seven pricing tiers remain with only the lowest of $104 unchanged. Ticket pricing is day-based and the pricing tiers are now 104, 119, 134, 154, 169, 184, and 194. The previous range of 104 to 179, meaning that one-day tickets have increased anywhere from 3 to 9% in price as of today. Each one-day pass has an expiration date, with, uh, while each tier contains a different set of blockout dates. More sought-after dates, such as holidays, are only available in the highest-tiered one-day pass. You can find the full list of each tier's blockout dates on the official Disneyland Resort website. Of course, multi-day tickets also increased in price by up to 16%. The price range for multi-day tickets was previously 285 to 415. It's now 310 to 480. 
Meanwhile, while you can't buy a new Disneyland Magic Key annual pass, prices have been increased on them nonetheless. It's a very Disney thing to do. This affects, of course, all renewals and potential future sales. Magic Key passes have increased in price uh, by anywhere from $50 to $150 based on pass type. Here's the breakdown. The Inspire Key is now $1,649. That's up $50. The Believe Key now $1,249, that's up $150. The Enchant Key is up to $849, that's up $150 as well. The Imagine Key now $499, that's up $50. Magic Key Passes have experienced uh, intermittent availability since they were introduced as a replacement to annual passes, uh, currently not available. Parking prices have also increased across Disneyland Resorts parking structures and surface lots. Theme park parking will now be $35. That is a $5 increase. Uh, the same amount it increased at Walt Disney World, but it is more. The Genie Plus service at Disneyland Resort will now cost more per guest per day. Genie Plus, which allows guests to reserve Lightning Lane return times at select attractions, now has a minimum price of $30. Previously, Genie Plus was available on certain dates for $25. The service uses date-based pricing. Meanwhile, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has joined Genie Plus paid service at Disneyland Resort as of today. Guests who pay for the additional fee of the Genie Plus service at Disneyland will be able to secure lightning lanes for the attraction. They are no longer separate additional costs. A new curated collection of dining concepts is coming to the downtown Disney district at Disneyland Resort in the form of Parkside Market. Parkside Market will offer four new concepts under one roof at the downtown Disney district. We'll talk about them all now. Soul Sister is a fast, casual, modern eatery that will serve a Korean forward menu based on bibimbap. That's Korean rice bowls with a California twist. Executive chef Kelly Kim will showcase bold Korean flavors through marinated meats, colorful vegetables, and savory sauces over rice noodles or salad, plus appetizers, an Asian-inspired breakfast menu, and handcrafted drinks. Sip and Sonder from founders Amanda Jane Thomas and uh, Shanita Nicholas is a black woman-owned brand that has been recognized as one of the best uh, cafes in all of Los Angeles by the LA Times. Guests in the district can expect to enjoy Sip and Sonder's signature lattes as well as fresh treats, frozen drinks, and Caribbean-inspired bites. Gigi's Chicken Shop from Boca Restaurant Group was founded by a James Beard award-winning restaurateur in Rob Katz and Kevin Bohm, alongside Michelin star chef partner Lee Wolin. Affectionately named after Wolin's mother, Geary, uh, the shop will serve a family-friendly menu of chicken sandwiches, salads, and classic dinner table sides. The first brick-and-mortar Gigi's Chicken Shop opened earlier this year in Chicago, and this new location in the downtown Disney district will be its first on the West Coast. In addition to these options, a second-story bar will be an alfresco spot offering great views to sip signature craft cocktails and mocktails from mixologists who infuse, muddle, stir, shake, and swizzle the freshest mixes using local ingredients and artful garnishes. Refreshing selections will include frozen lemonades, frosés, espresso martinis, shareable cocktails, and spirit-free elixirs. Later this year, Downtown Disney will open a new stage and lawn for special events, activities, musical entertainment, and more on the west end of the district. In this brand new area, you'll be able to see a soaring new sculptural tower designed by Nicholas Smith. The new tower will pay tribute to the sublime work of pioneering architects of color in Southern California during the mid-20th century with unique geometric patterns in the sculpture evoking the famed mid-century buildings they created. The next mug coming to Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar at the Disneyland Hotel will be inspired by Ursula of the Little Mermaid. Disney shared a teaser video with the caption, we've traveled all the way to the Caspian Sea and back for a mug that will leave you speechless. Ursula evokes uh, the Caspian Sea in her spell to give Ariel legs and take her voice. The top of the mug is inspired by the crown Ursula steals from King Triton. Her octopus tentacles wrap around the base, and the color is difficult to discern in the video, but it appears to be brown in color. It may not be, though. In the video, someone places a golden glowing orb in the center of the mug. This also, to me, more evokes the um, cauldron um, that she uses. This is where she sees, uh, you know, she's able to see things far away or into the future or whatever um, she may do. Her, her witch's cauldron, um, essentially, in the film. Less so than the crown. I mean, maybe it's also the crown. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. I'm not, I've seen The Little Mermaid several times, but I never thought of it as evoking Triton's crown. Maybe, I'm, I have no idea. An original Broadway-style production known as Disney, The Tale of Moana, 
will debut in December 2024 aboard the Disney Treasure, the sixth Disney Cruise Line ship that will embark on its maiden voyage that same month. Disney Parks blog shared the following as part of an update to the Disney Treasure ship log progress report. Debuting exclusively at the Walt Disney Theater aboard the Disney Treasure, Disney The Tale of Moana will bring the adventurous journey of Moana, inspired by the Walt Disney Animation Studios film, to center stage for the first time. The show will follow Moana as she embarks on an incredible journey to save her island after she is chosen by the ocean to restore the heart of Tafiti. Fans of the original film will recognize many beloved characters like Grandma Tala, Maui, and Tamatoa when they appear on stage, as well as songs from the film's iconic soundtrack. Disney also announced that it will soon be launching a search for performers to partake in this production. Moana will have additional representation aboard the Disney Treasure in the form of the Hey Hey Cafe, what a great name, a dining location inspired by the 2016 Walt Disney Animation Studios film. Disney announced that Moana inspired eatery in early September alongside the Jungle Cruise inspired Skipper Society Lounge and the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea themed Periscope Pub and as well the Disney's Mulan inspired Jack Cricket Cafe. Disney Cruise Line has updated its placeholder reservation policy. The alteration was announced on the official Disney Travel Agents website on October 11th. Uh, the following was shared in the announcement. Since placeholder reservations were first introduced several years ago, Disney Cruise Line has asked guests to make a payment for any additional deposit amount at the time of selecting an actual sale date. Effective immediately, guests and travel agents selecting a sale date for a placeholder reservation will now have the standard three-day hold period to pay any additional deposit amounts owned. In the full, if the full deposit amount is not met by the due date, the reservation will be canceled and any onboard offer benefits received with when the placeholder reservation was booked will be forfeited. Please note that if a reservation with an onboard offer applied is canceled due to non-payment, the reservation cannot be reinstated. Placeholder reservations are non-specific arrangements for a future Disney Cruise Line voyage that guests can book while already embarked on a Disney cruise. The reservations are open-ended and require guests to make a partial deposit when they ultimately choose a specific cruise and sale date, they pay a discounted price for that entire trip, 10% off prevailing rates. Those booking a placeholder reservation also receive discounted deposit prices on sailings lasting seven nights or longer. Guests were previously asked to pay any remaining deposit uh, upon choosing a sale date. As of October 11th, guests now will have a three-day hold window to pay the rest of the deposit after they select that date. The reservation again will be canceled uh, after that point if payment is not made. New queue and seating area enhancements will soon be added to several locations across Disneyland Paris to further shield guests from the potentially uncomfortable or hazardous weather. Recently released concept art showcases planned roof structures soon coming to Casey's Corner at Disneyland Park and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror in its Rose Garden at Walt Disney Studios Park. Though no concept art was shared, queue enhancements are also planned for the outdoor portion of Peter Pan's flight at Disneyland Paris. The first piece of art depicts a roof that's planned to be built atop Casey's Corner's exterior seating area. The structure aesthetically matches the Victorian-style architecture of Main Street, as well as Casey's Corner, the quick-service restaurant, which, believe it or not, first existed in Paris and then uh, became a part of the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. Um, currently, where this seating area is, there's just umbrellas, very similar to, to Walt Disney World. There's just a bunch of umbrellas. This will be a much welcome addition. And also, love that it looks thematic. This is... Uh, beautiful. I love, um, so far what we've seen, Disneyland Paris is a very special park. It is by far the most beautiful castle park. And I know I have been very fearful, as have many of the fans who um, call that park home, um, that as Disney takes over and as Imagineering comes in and works on that park, that maybe, you know, sometimes we see things at Walt Disney World or even Disneyland that maybe are of a lesser quality, um, these additions that are made to certain spaces or changes that are made. Um, a little lesser quality than what came before. So the fear has been in Paris is, will Disney match the quality of the park that already existed with any changes they make? That's been a big fear. And I will say thus far, while, you know, the Luca dining room at, at Bella Notte is not my favorite decision, and while turning um, one of the restaurants into a Coco restaurant, not my favorite decision either, everything they've added um, matches in quality level and uh, as far as being thematic with the rest of the park. So seeing this concept art, it looks like we're getting very much the same on Main Street. This is great. It's already the best Main Street in the world, and um, this is just going to make it even better. It's really cool. Also in the art, we can see there are plans for a new character meet-and-greet gazebo just across the way. Currently, that's an uncovered meet-and-greet space. As, as we speak, Stitch is meeting there. Um, but this is another, again, another great thing to see them 
um, you know, investing in the future of this park and making things better. A roof structure is also planned for the Rose Garden outside of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror attraction at the Walt Disney Studios Park. Though portions of the attraction exterior queue are currently covered and a section of its queue is inside the attraction building itself, the Rose Garden is currently covered. Um, they'll just be doing some improvements on this space as well. This version of the Tower Terror, a copy of the one that used to exist at California Adventure. A roof is also planned for the Peter Pan's flight queue. No concept art was shown, but there is, if you've ever been to Disneyland Paris, there is a pretty large portion of the queue that is outside to the right side of the building that is completely uncovered. This is not surprising. This is, um, I think, a very welcome addition to the park. Sticking with Disneyland Paris, they will be adding Frozen and Winnie the Pooh scenes to Le Pays de Conifé. Uh, that's their version of the Storybook Land Canal Boats in Fantasyland in 2024. Le Pays de Conifé uh, opened at Disneyland Paris in 1994, and in honor of the 30th anniversary of the attraction, again, Frozen and Winnie the Pooh will be added along with some uh, much-needed refurbishment projects um, during that time. Frozen will come to life in miniature form as one of the familiar fairy tale uh, locales in Fantasyland. Imagineers are closely lurk working with Disneyland Paris Central Shops to create a detailed model of the majestic North Mountain covered in a thick white blanket of snow and Elsa's iconic ice palace at its peak. Guests will be able to spot Anna, Elsa, Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven on their way to Wandering Oaken's trading post and sauna. Um, it seems this was not said, but it does look like Frozen will replace uh, Peter and the Wolf. Um, that's one of the scenes currently in the attraction. A storybook land will soon offer a new home to Winnie the Pooh and friends as well, located not far from the Cottage of the Seven Dwarfs. It appears to be replacing the Hansel and Gretel scene. The Disney Post uh, specifically calls the attraction a celebration of beloved Walt Disney Animation Studio stories and fables. Um, so there is one scene in here that does not depict a scene from a Disney animated feature. It is the final scene of the attraction, and it is my personal favorite. That would be Return to Oz, which is an 80s live-action Disney film. The reason, um, you know, may remember we did an interview with Imagineer Jim Schull a while ago for Disneyland Paris. And Jim talked about working on this attraction and why they put Oz at the end, and that's because it is the only American fairy tale. And so that was the reason it was put at the end. But again, very specifically saying the attraction is a celebration of Disney feature animation, Return to Oz is not Disney feature animation. And so... Um, this is one of those weird, quirky, cool things that I've always loved about Paris is this, this Return to Oz scene. The other really cool thing about it is the music that plays in that scene is from the Main Street Electrical Parade when it had a special finale to promote Return to Oz. So for a number of reasons, this is just one of those kooky, amazing things as a fan um, that we love. And so, I, I, I mean, we knew it was probably inevitable I, I understand Peter and the Wolf and, and Hansel and Gretel are not two of the most well-known and beloved Disney tales of all time. I mean, in general, they're two of the most well-known and beloved fairy tales of all time, but they're not necessarily IP that Disney continues to promote currently. So I do understand them bringing Frozen and Winnie the Pooh. And Winnie the Pooh's refreshing, right? Because that's an older IP. And, you know, I, I think when I heard there were going to be updates, I half expected, well, yeah, Frozen, but probably also... I'm sure they're going to do Encanto, and I'm sure they're going to do this. And, I'm sure, and it's, it's refreshing that, yeah, one is Frozen, but one is also Winnie the Pooh. But, um, man, if, if Return to Oz survives this, I will be very grateful, but I do not expect it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a video of Le Pays de Conifé right here on the channel, Storybook Land in Paris. You can just write that, too. I have both titles, so you don't have to worry about your French spelling. Um, please go watch it. It's, if you're not going to make it out there before they make changes... I think it's worth a watch just to see that, that wonderful, weird Oz scene. <laughs> I'm going to miss it. And Disneyland Paris, if you're just going to throw it in the garbage, I will, I'll make a special trip. Like, I'll come pick it up. I'll buy it its own plane seat. I'll sit next to it. And we'll, and we'll come home. And I'll, I'll put it back here. We could put it on the backdrop. Right, Jake? You okay with Return to Oz? Jake fell asleep. It's fine. <laughs> We should end the show, shall we? <laughs> I'm going on a tangent. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can also support the entire team behind the show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. 
Get access to exclusive content. You get early access to the WW News Today podcast, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Uh, special shout out to all of our WIGS members who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news and return to Oz news, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Deep in the Plus. Each week, join host Rob Whiteside as he and a panel of Disney superfans take a different movie or TV show from the Disney Plus catalog. They'll tell you its history, details, and give their review so you'll know if it's worth your time. Current shows, classic movies, and everything in between. Watch Deep in the Plus live Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern for new episodes. Or catch Deep in the Plus anytime on YouTube on WDWNT-TV.